Good evening, I'm John Carter and welcome to Poland Daily. Yesterday, the ministers of foreign affairs of 27 EU member states discussed the withdrawal of Article 7, which the Union threatened to enforce against Poland. According to sources within the Polish media, an agreement for withdrawal may be made by mid-May. As we informed recently, one of the leading civic platform politicians, Stanisław Gawłowski, has been arrested. Publicists believe that other politicians of the party are very worried about his arrest. RMF Radio stated that Donald Tusk, the president of the European Council, is allegedly afraid that once he returns to Poland, he will also be imprisoned along with his son. Tusk is scheduled to testify in Warsaw on the 23rd of April regarding negligence related to the preparations of the visit in Smolensk. The detention of Stanisław Gawłowski has caused a torrent of fear amongst civic platform. That is the reason why Donald Tusk is spewing rumors about his alleged pending arrest. I think he has reason to be afraid. Leaders of civic platform are certain that the arrest of Stanisław Gawłowski is a clear-cut example of breaking the rule of law in Poland. Hence, they are trying their hardest to sabotage a compromise between Poland and the European Commission. Piotr Nistor, an investigative journalist with uh, Telewizja Republika, revealed today that officers of the Polish Central Anti-Corruption Bureau have arrested members of a criminal organization known as the Impostors. Members of the group posed as a special forces agents to commit extortion and financial fraud. Former Minister of Justice Andrzej Kay is among those detained, along with several former members of government officials and law experts. They are alleged to have cooperated with the imposters in one of the most shocking corruption scandals of the last decade. Officers of the CAB arrested four suspects today. Among them was a former Minister of Justice between 2004-2005. The detained are alleged to have had connections in the tax office and in the Ministry of Justice. Our officers have discovered that the imposters illegally handled official matters in exchange for money. This case is definitely one of the biggest cases in CAB history, given the scale of involvement of top-level politicians and former government officials. I presume that the prosecutors and CAB officers handling the matter have a tough few days ahead of them. The thing that shocked me the most is the ability of the imposters to make themselves look so credible that even the heads of many important government institutions fell for their lies. Care workers for the disabled started a protest in the Polish parliament today. The reason for the strike is the upsettingly low amount of social benefit provided by the state. This is a request for rehabilitation benefits for the disabled, the over-18s and capable of leading an independent existence for 500 zlotys per month without an income criteria. This is needed right now. The parents are very reasonable. They are not calling for an increase of the 153 zlotys for helplessness allowance, which has remained unchanged since 2006. All we asked for was levelling the figure with the allowance given by the social insurance institution. We are constantly being told there is no money, not in the past, not now and not in the future. There were many more requests as disabled people's situation calls for it. I listened to the Law and Justice Convention closely and I was shocked, disappointed and bitter because disabled adults were not mentioned as if they stopped existing. The government the government's priority seems to be socialization through culture. I think that helping the most vulnerable social group should be a state priority. The needs of the disabled are very important, and the aid currently provided by the government is ridiculously low. In December 2016, the Polish Ministry of Culture and National Heritage bought Prince Czartoryski's famous art collection for 100 million euros. The foundation, which received the money, later transferred it to an account in Liechtenstein. However, the transaction is being criticised by the opposition, but the cult Minister of Culture and National Heritage, Piotr Glinski, stated that everything was done by the book. 500 million euros 
500 million zlotys was sent to an account in Liechtenstein. Why? This needs to be investigated by the prosecution. This is pure hypocrisy of the ruling law and justice party, since they complain all the time about Polish money going abroad. We have put an end to the matter which was unresolved for a long time. It is a decision that we made after consulting many art experts, who all agreed that the Czartoryski collection should be bought by the Polish state. Furthermore, the former Minister of Culture in Civic Platform's government, Bogdan Zdrojewski, also tried to buy the collection, but he did not finalize the deal. We also know that his offer was three times higher than what we paid. Poles are unique people in many ways, but being one of the few Western European countries excluded from the US visa waiver program is not a pleasant way to be singled out. Fortunately, from this year, it seems that Polish passport holders might be able to travel to the US without restrictions. All this might be possible due to a campaign launched by Polish airline LOT and partners from the travel industry. They targeted the main reason preventing Poles from visa-free entry, which was percentage of rejections of visa applications in US consulates. Today has reached 5.9 and should fall below 3%. Polish travel operators plan to encourage Poles to apply for a US visa. As a result, more successful applications will reach US countries. Eventually, rejections should fall to a desired level. We already see the first results of the plan. We received many more visa applications and their quality is way better than a year ago. Anyone interested should visit the website bezvizdousa.pl and follow the instructions. Poles want to seize the opportunity. I was thinking about traveling to the USA, but the thing that appalled me was the visa system. I'm confronted with insulting questions like, is your career prostitution? I am not going anywhere, I cannot afford to. But I think if Americans can travel freely, others should be able to do the same. Great idea, I guess. Poland is a civilized country, an EU member. We ought to be able to enter the USA without visas. I think I would use it, perhaps not to find work, but rather as a tourist. Including Poland in US visa waiver program was one of the promises made by Donald Trump to Polish American voters. Yet citizens of neighboring countries, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Lithuania, are already in the program. On September 30th, we'll know if Poland qualified, and if so, travel from Poland to the USA will explode. Polish diaspora living in the United States are taking measures to prevent the U.S. Congress from adopting an act which will allow Jewish organizations to claim their airless property in Poland. Three million Jews and Polish citizens were murdered by Germans in the Holocaust. International law and U.S. regulations dictate that the property belongs to the state of Poland. Almost 75 years after the end of World War II, Jewish organizations are trying to change that law. In 2017, two pieces of legislation were presented in the United States Congress, S-447 and H.R. 1226. The legislation pertains to so-called Holocaust-era assets. The purpose of this legislation is to obtain upwards of $65 billion in compensation from Poland to be paid to organizations claiming to be successors of the pre-war Jewish citizens of Poland who died without any heirs during World War II. When a person or persons die without a will, their assets revert to the country where they lived. Poland suffered horrific losses in World War II. In terms of its population, it lost over six million of Jewish and Christian citizens. Poland did not start the war. As a matter of fact, it was its first victim.
Despite having fought on every front, the most loyal ally of the United States and Great Britain was handed over to the Soviet Union at Yalta. The system the communists imposed continued to brutalize Poland for the next 44 years. In effect, World War II actually ended in 1989 for Poland. These bills are trying to repatriate huge sums of money to private entities unrelated to the Holocaust victims who perished as a result of German policies. The United States has no right to interfere in the internal systems of a sovereign nation and ally, in this case, Poland. This legislation is an insult. I am requesting you call your United States representative serving on the House Foreign Affairs Committee and tell them to kill this bill. Stop blaming the victim. $65 billion, that's right, $65 billion. That's roughly half of Poland's annual gross domestic product. For additional information about this legislation, as well as the phone numbers of those representatives in your district, please access our website at stopacthr1226.org. That's S-T-O-P-A-C-T-H-R-1226.org. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. I'm John Carter, and Poland Daily returns same time tomorrow. Good night.